thing uh, I will share about how how a real family we are now. Um, I love that, and uh, it kind of like summarized the whole week for me because every activity we did, every uh, situation I was involved, I felt like I am with my family and I am support. And uh, and of course, the Holy Spirit is the one that does it. But then, just that feeling, it's what is my highlight of the week. Mm -hmm. And also a reminder about that when we do everything that is possible for us, God will do what is impossible. So I believe that if you think about it, for us it's impossible to create that. We are there, I know, but it's the Holy Spirit the one that does it in this way. distribution was a lot bigger this year than it was last year and seeing more families was very impactful for me. One that stood out in particular was an older gentleman who was struggling with depression and anxiety and we prayed for him and he was just really hungry for hugs and he ended up coming to Celebration Sunday and he was smiling and that was just really wonderful to see him among people smiling. And yeah, also last time I was here, it felt like we had brothers and sisters in Christ, and this time it felt like we were visiting family. This trip we did a lot of food distribution and I remember one house in particular, it was this 94 year old lady. Um, she was the great grandmother of a man named Oscar. Um, so she would have, uh, yeah, she has a lot of grandchildren. Um, we'll, we'll just say that. Um, and anyways, it, she, she had us all come in and made us all sit down um, and she, she was just so nice. Um, and then we found out that she really liked to sing, and, but she was having lung problems and couldn't. So my mom had an excellent idea of singing the doxology for her. Um, and it was just, it was fantastic. Monica. I don't know what you're saying, but I get the gist of it anyway.
Tienes otro dos. Tienes otro dos. Y tienes que decir, ah, no. No, no, todavía no. Todavía no. No, no, no. No tiene que comer.
that really shows up if you go to a service. It's everyone is so happy to participate. There's impromptu speaking, they're, they're praying, they're singing. Um, I think at one point in time the sound system kind of went out and everyone just continued to sing with all they had. Uh, not sure they were all on the same verse or in the same key, but it was just such a glorious experience to know that they just want to participate and worship. And it just kind of reminds me how often we take for granted the gift of being able to worship. And uh, God's there and we, you know, to worship him just brings you more joy.
things impacted me, but I'm gonna kind of point out like the, the bigger picture stuff. Like, first of all, I want to point out how Fabio has been dealing with all of us in this crazy traffic and stuff that I'm definitely not used to, especially driving a manual bus. That is crazy. Um, but he very he really opened up through men's ministry and on the fishing trip yesterday and just became more and more involved even when he thought he wasn't really included. Um, that happened with a lot of people that kind of eventually merged in and especially me being my first time I went into a lot and learned lots of different Spanish words that I can't put together yet but um, <laughs> basically the bigger picture of how the pastor and everyone's very accepting and I don't know I learned more about Quentin we got to have a good time fishing and Ed to display his love for babies and he got to hold a couple of them so he was super happy mm -hmm. but uh, the other thing is just it seems like not just the relationship with God that people have a uh, struggle with it's even their smaller relationships between marriages and stuff mm -hmm. and I think that's the relationship with God is first but they also should try to mend those because it's all connected in one big sense struggles but all together everyone still comes together in the day and has a great day so yeah that's what I learned so awesome Um, the Holy Spirit, you know, and how their love is like goes out really easy. The kids are lovely, um, the youth is incredible, and the pastors they are really kind, and that makes a difference. That's why I think that um, doing missions here in Costa Rica. Make it so easy, you know. I know it's not totally easy, but you can make it easy because you get in love with them so fast. Yes. Um, think about what mission work really is. Whether we do mission work back to home in our cities or local places, or we do uh, mission work up in a foreign land, uh, it's all the same. It's all. God's plan for us to help others and especially working with doing mission work within a community and so we from the U.S. come down as a community and we serve a mission and it's, it's, it's a camaraderie among all Christians and I think it's, uh, it's God's will because when we all in this life and eternity, we will be together. And like I said before, as happy as you are here on earth, you're gonna be 10 times happier in heaven. God bless everyone. So what, what impacted me was having the ability to basically bring God into people's lives and just watching them receive the gifts we brought them and Watching them show us love and compassion really did it in for me. And the service really had me crying a little bit too. Um, this is my first mission trip, uh, and it's not my last. 
because after this week, I realized it's what I am calling, calling it. So they feel a lot for those people, and it'd be nice to see them next year. Okay. I've had the privilege of being on all five of the mission trips that have been brought down to Cicadas, uh, Costa Rica. And every time when we're leaving, I have the same feeling. And that is that how we got, uh, I've experienced the power of the Holy Spirit and, and what He does amongst them, each, and all, each and every one of us every day. But you can really feel and see His power while we're here. Orchestrates, but an example I would like to give for, for this week's um, experience was uh, one evening we were, we were lots of people were at the church, probably 75 to 100 people at the church, and this young lady comes into the church compound with her little baby and asked to speak to the pastor, and, and uh, she had never been to the church before. And uh, when he started talking to her, he found out that um, she'd come for help. Her mother-in-law was unhappy the fact that she had just had a baby boy, and and uh, the grandmother wanted a baby girl, and so she came in and she burned all the baby's possessions. And uh, and she was just coming to the church to see if she could get help to get some clothes for her baby. Pastor said something to uh, one of the ladies in the church. In the middle of all of everything was going on, a few people disappeared, and clothes started coming. Thanks for 